Good morning. It's morning now here as I'm filming this. Good morning, friends in first grade. My name is Mrs. Layef, and I'm going to be helping you along with your families. I'll be helping you learn about your faith this year to prepare to receive the sacrament of um, First Communion and First Reconciliation next year. So welcome to our first class. We always begin our first class with a tour of the church. So um, you may physically have not been in the church for, for a while since the pandemic began. So um, we can take you on a quick little backstage tour of the church. The church is kind of, it's kind of a nice quiet place and I like to come here sometimes during the day when there's nobody here because it's a nice place to just sit and think and have quiet time on my own. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. So let's begin our tour of the church with uh, the altar. So I've labeled some of, the, some of the objects in the church, just so you can start to learn the correct terms for some of the items that you see when you come into the church. So the table that is in the center of this space is called the altar, and it's, that's the church word for it. And that is where the celebration of the mass mainly takes place when you come to mass. This whole space up here is a sacred space. And this is called the sanctuary. That's what that word looks like, sanctuary. And that is the area basically from this step up is called the sanctuary. There's another object here called an ambo. So the ambo is sort of what you'd call a podium um, you know, if, if it were being used any place else, but it's an ambo is the church word for it because it's the place from where God's word is proclaimed. So when you come to mass, the first thing you do when you come in, um, you sit in one of the benches and you, um, watch the mass. So the beginning of the mass, all the action takes place at the ambo. That's where the readings are. And then about halfway through the mass, the, the uh, focus shifts to the altar where the bread and wine are blessed in a special way during mass that we believe that Jesus becomes present right with us in the form of the bread and wine. So the altar is a very sacred space. Um, the whole sanctuary is a very sacred space. Now, because of the pandemic, you, you'd notice that there are some health um, uh, measures that we've taken. We have things spaced out so that people stand six feet apart. This is what the aisle looks like now. It's got markers six feet apart. We have hand sanitizer everywhere. And even up behind the altar where the priest stays, things look a little bit different. So this is actually called the credence table where um, the water is kept. We add water to the wine and then the priest washes his hand as, as part of the symbolic um, prayer when he's um, doing the consecration. There are also masks and hand sanitizers up here because right now, like every, everywhere that you go, our most important wish is to keep everyone safe. So this is the sanctuary here at Incarnation Church where all the action happens at mass. So let's go for a little backstage view. So this room here used to be kind of a side chapel. Now we've turned it into a conference room. It hasn't really been um, opened up yet because we really can't have meetings here. But once we do, it's, it's a beautiful space. It's going to be the John and Ruth Ford conference room. So here, this room is called the reconciliation room. And when you receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation, you come in here to sit face to face with the priest, or you can sit behind the screen. So next year, uh, when you're in second grade, you'll learn all about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. But it's just kind of an, another nice, peaceful room. This is the really kind of the junk room of the church. It's the secret passageway that leads behind the altar to the area of the church known as the sacristy. And this is kind of like the hub of the action before mass. This is where the Eucharistic ministers will come and speak to the priest, where they'll check over their readings. 
the priest and the altar servers will be getting things ready for mass. Uh, for example, these are some of the vessels that we use at mass. We have this plate is called a paten. That's what we put the bread on at mass. And then we have these cups, which are called chalices. They hold the wine. And then we have, um, that's the wine. And the altar bread that people receive at communion is kept over here as well. I took out a big piece to show you. This is a big piece of the altar bread. You see, it's just like a flat wafer with the cross. Sometimes at, the ten, well, at our old 1030 mass, we used to have the real bread that volunteers would bake, but now we, um, unfortunately, we can't use that anymore because of health reasons. So we, we just have the cardboardy type, which you'll get to taste before you make your first communion. So another thing you might notice when you come into the church, see, this is how we went. We went all the way around. When you come into the church is the priest might be wearing a certain color depending on the season in the church. So this is a picture of what the priest's closet looks like. There's all different colors of robes, but there's mainly, the main colors are red, green, purple, and white and gold. And that's because the church follows a very strict calendar of the color of each Sunday and what the priest has to wear. So Father Steve doesn't get up in the morning and say, gee, you know, I feel like wearing purple, purple today. Um, he has to wear the color of the day depending on the church season. So right now, if you notice, that's a map of the whole liturgical season. The most of the Sundays are green. Green is the most popular um, color. It's the color of ordinary time, which is what we're in right now. It's a time when we're not celebrating a feast or preparing for a feast. Okay, so the two biggest feasts in the church are Christmas and Easter. So Christmas is the one that's coming up next. So the four weeks before Christmas are called Advent. And that's when we prepare for Christmas. So preparation Sundays are always purple. And then Christmas is white or gold. So when you come to Mass at the end of November, November 29th, that'll be the first Sunday of Advent. Father Steve will be wearing purple for the first time since uh, last Lent. So then um, we'll hit the Christmas season, which is five Sundays, and that'll be either white or gold. And then we get into ordinary time until it's time to prepare for Easter. Um, that season is called Lent. And so we have those Sundays in Lent. Palm Sunday is red. Red isn't too popular a color for uh, the liturgical seasons. It's really only two Sundays that are red, Palm Sunday and Pentecost. So then we have the Easter season, which is all white and gold, and then Pentecost. So every year we repeat this church cycle. So it's not like the colors aren't the same. Like Christmas, um, most people would say, oh, Christmas colors are red and green. They're uh, in the church, they're gold and white. And the, the robe that the priest wears is called a chasuble, which means little tent or little house. And that's because the priest, um, it, it's a garment that they used to wear back in Jesus' time. People could actually live in it. Um, you know, if at night they would sort of huddle under it. There are no sleeves to it. It's just like a cape that they could wrap around. So this is the sacristy. Um, all kinds of interesting things happening in here. We have sanitizer and uh, paper towels because we wipe down the benches every time after people uh, celebrate mass because we want everyone to be safe. This is a special area of the church called the tabernacle. So I just want you to be familiar with that. And this will be the last spot on our tour. So the tabernacle is this gold, beautiful gold box. And during mass, you know, the priest takes the bread and we believe Jesus becomes present in the bread. So if there's bread left over after mass, it's stored in here in case we need it if somebody is sick and we need to bring them communion or something like that. So, um, the, or sometimes you'll notice if the priest runs out of communion during Mass, they'll come over to the tabernacle to get some more. So we always keep some in here uh, for emergencies. But it's not just bread in here. We believe it's really Jesus. So that's why if you're paying attention, you notice when people pass by this area, which is right when you come in the side door, 
um, right coming in this way and the piano's here, um, you'll notice that people will bow or, or kneel briefly and make the sign of the cross. So um, it's a very, very important and special area of the church. So I'd like you to make a habit of doing that. The next time you're in the church, I'd like you to try to remember to bow at the tabernacle. And again, that's, that's where it is if you come in the other side and make the sign of the cross. And we're going to spend a few minutes practicing that, and that's actually gonna be your homework for class, okay? So um, I'd like to say a special hello to all of you, and I'm gonna turn the camera in the mirror so that you can all get a look at me, um, Mrs. Layef, but I wanna say a special hello to Allie, Anna, Beatrix, Natalie, Nicole, Kayla, Lillian, Isabella, Danny, Lucas, Sean, Callie, Lola, Liana, Dean, and Will. Welcome to our class here at Incarnation. Here's a brief, yep. Okay, because I want to show you how to make the sign of the cross. So if you can all make the sign of the cross with me, this is what I look like. Some of you may have seen me around church or around the neighborhood. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in class very soon, hopefully. So if you'd all practice with me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. That's how we make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And your homework is, if you think you, can, you know how to make the sign of the cross, I'd like you to ask a grown-up to take a video of you doing that and tell me your name so that I can get to know you and match your name with your face, like I just did for you. So anyway, thank you all for spending this time with me. I hope you're all staying safe, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.